Okay, French braid block. Let's do it, but quilt as you go. Hi, welcome back to Pattern Pool TV. I'm Monica, and if you're new here, we focus on all things sewing and quilt as you go. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a quilt as you go French braid block. And if you haven't heard, we've started a free worldwide quilt as you go along. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make one French braid block. And if you're joining in with the free quilt as you go along, you'll need to make two. So these are all my blocks so far for the free quilt as you go along. I'm going to join all of my blocks together using my easy cover strip method, but on the back. And now this is why the batting is cut half inch smaller all the way around the edge. If you haven't seen that method, we'll put the link in the description so you can check that method out. But if you just wanna join your blocks together using the regular joining strip method, just cut your batting to the same size as your backing squares. To make one French braid block, you will need a starting triangle. So that starts with a four inch square that's cut once on the diagonal. You'll need five dark fabrics for the braid. From each dark fabric, cut one inch and a half by four inch strip and one inch and a half by five inch strip. You will need a light fabric for the background. So cut two, three and a quarter by 10 and a half inch pieces and another two, three and a quarter by five and a quarter inches. Then you'll also need your 10 inch backing square and your nine inch square of batting that is positioned with a, so that you have the half inch gap all the way around the edge. And I've held both of those layers together using a light application of basting spray. To prepare your block, mark a line that is two and a half inches away from the edge of the fabric on one side and another line that's two and a half inches away from the opposite side. Then mark a line in the center. So our center line will actually be five inches away from one edge. To mark this, I just used an ordinary 4B lead pencil. And just make sure that you don't press too heavy because the last thing you want is to be able to see that pencil line through one of your light fabrics. To get started, take your triangle and align it in the center with the point aligned with our center line and the edge down here, make that nice and level with the edge of your backing fabric. I'm gonna hold my triangle in place using a little bit of fabric glue, just in each of the corners. Now, if you don't have fabric glue, you may have some craft glue or some children's glue, and provided it says that it's washable, non-toxic and acid free, you'll be able to use that, but just use tiny little bits. So I'm at my machine ready to sew. I have a neutral colored thread on that's going to look good and blend with my fabrics on the top and also look good on the back. I have a stitch length of three. I've moved my needle position over to the right. So, cause I'm just using my standard foot. So that's going to give me my quarter inch seam allowance. And I also have an automatic tie off set with my machine. If you don't have an automatic tie off, you're just gonna do a little reverse stitch um, at the beginning and at the end of each row of stitching. So let's get sewing. To start off, we're going to take one of our smaller strips and we're going to place it right sides together with our starting triangle. I'm going to make this top edge here nice and level. And so that our stitching isn't going to cross over on the back, we're always going to start sewing a quarter of an inch away from this side line here. And I like to make a little dot there. And we're always going to finish a quarter of an inch away from our underneath fabric. So let's get started with our sewing. We're gonna flip over to the right side. Now you can finger press or you can press each time. This time, I'm actually just going to finger press as I go. Now I'm going to take my long strip in the same color and I'm going to place that right sides together with my other pieces and I'm bringing this up and it's going to my other blue piece, making those edges level. And I'm going to once again start quarter of an inch away from the top and a quarter of an inch away from this line here, just to make sure that my stitches don't cross over on the back. Flipping over again. Now what we wanna aim for is when we flip the second longer strip over, 
we want the corner of that to end up on our centre line and that's how we know that our French braid is going to be nice and straight. Now what I'm going to do is just continue sewing my strips on in exactly the same way, starting with the short one and finishing with the longer one. So let's see how this turns out. So taking my next shorter strip, I'm lining up this edge here with my underneath piece. I'm going to make my dot so that it's a quarter of an inch away from that marked line. And there's my dot quarter inch away from this edge here. Flipping over and now taking my next strip, lining it up with my straight edge and stitching again. Flipping over and making sure that this point here is aligned with our center line. Okay, so remember you always start with the short strip and then finish with the longer strip. So all short strips on this side where we start and finishing with the long strip. So I've now got my five dark fabric sewn on for the French braid and now all we need to do is fill in those top corners. So to do that I'm going to take my shorter pieces from my background fabric and just going to line it up in the same way here just like that. We're going to have a little bit extending over the edge but that's all going to get trimmed off. I'll make my little dot there because that's where I want to finish my stitching and my little dot here and stitching in the same way. So when we go to sew our second piece on, position it so that it is extending past our backing fabric. So about half an inch past the backing fabric and about half an inch past this particular line here. So it's fairly centered. And as I said, these pieces are bigger because we are going to trim them back. So I'm going to start sewing right from the top. That doesn't matter, that's going to get trimmed, but I will stop a quarter of an inch away from this line here. A bit hard to work out because it is on a bit of a diagonal, but just somewhere about a quarter of an inch away. So when you flip this piece over, you want to make sure that it's going to cover in this triangle area of the backing and batting fabric. So flipping that over, and yes, I can see that that has nicely covered everything. So we're not going to trim just yet. We are going to, first of all, remark the two and a half inch line. So that's two and a half inches away from the edge of your backing fabric. And I'm just going to remark that line and do the same thing on the other side. And now I'm going to head to the sewing machine and sew our side pieces on. So I'm going to take one of our pieces and I'm going to place it right sides together. And I'm aligning the straight edge with our marked line. And I'm just centering the piece. I'm just extending this piece here. So I have about a quarter of an inch down that edge there and plenty of room up here. And I'm just going to sew this piece 
on this side and then sew the other piece on the other side. To sew this, you can start all the way from the bottom edge of the block and sew all the way to the top edge. So before I do the final press on my block, I'm just going to trim away the excess fabrics from the side edge, just using a pair of scissors. Make sure that you get right in and trim all your darker fabrics away, just in case they're going to show a shadow through on your lighter fabric. So you can now press the block. Double check that you don't have any of your dark fabrics extending past the seam, so you can see a bit of a shadow. I will come back and give that an extra little trim. Now trim your block back to the same size as your backing square. Now if your backing square has shrunk in slightly, don't stress because we will trim them slightly before we join all of the blocks together for our quilt as you go along. And there's our French braid block. And this is what it looks like from the back. You can barely see the stitching because I've used a neutral colored thread and um, a very busy backing fabric. Wow, I loved making these blocks. Imagine a whole quilt made of these blocks and all of the French braids facing in different directions. Anyway, if you're joining the free quilt as you go along, make sure that you make two of these blocks. So you can see all of our blocks are building up to make our quilt for our free quilt as you go along. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you at the same time next week. Bye.